Do you want early access? Do you want uncut reactions? If so, then check out our Patreon. Link in the description down below. Stranger Shings. Stranger Stings? Stranger Shings. Stranger Stings. Yeah. Chapter 3 of Season 4, The Monster and the Superhero. This set, this season so far has been definitely the most horror-inspired. Oh, yeah. Like, holy hell. The opening, e- the opening two episodes alone have just set such a beautiful stage for some very creepy horror like horror inspired stuff the way that they the people are dying with their eyes getting sucked out their their bodies getting just crumpled up like a piece of t- like a piece of tissue paper it's super creepy it it plays with like some body horror elements and also some like uh nightmare on elm street like you were talking about in the very first episode yeah it's and, like a different take on freddy because he kills you in your dreams this guy's like projecting himself into your thoughts by the seemingly look of it and then killing you from like within your thoughts is what I had would have to guess. I also wonder what he means exactly by I want you to join me. Again, I think... I wonder it, if he's like sucking their souls out of their body when he does that to them or something. I think he in in some way... It, I'm not 100% sure on it, but... So that would be another is, parallel to Freddy if so. Well, yeah. And I think this is probably going to lead to him getting more powerful. The more people he does that to, the more powerful he gets. I can't remember if they ever specifically stated or if it was hinted at, but like there was the whole thing in Night Round Elm Street where I think you see about three or four, like when he lifts his shirt up and he's got the faces of the, the souls kids that he's the, killed. Yeah. And like every time he goes to kill someone, he cuts himself first. And then that's a place for the soul to enter his body. I could see that. And I can't remember if they ever explicitly stated that, but it makes sense. He's like, watch this. Cuts his fingers off, you know. He lifts his shirt up and cuts himself in another scene. And then later on, you know, he shows off the souls. And, like, he's eating the souls. Like, he does the spaghetti thing with the meatballs. Yeah, that's that's one thing I see that, too. And I think maybe that's what's going on here. I don't know, but I'm extremely intrigued. Uh, they found Eddie in the last episode, which I'm glad Eddie finally has someone to help him now. Because, you know, yeah. if he would have to deal with the sight of that and also everyone hunting him down and no one would believe him. Yeah. I mean, Jesus. Well, not to mention, like, the where he had that bottle. If Jock Dude had found him first, I feel like he probably would have killed Jock Dude. Oh, in no doubt, so. no doubt, because Jock Dude would have probably just like. It's good that they went ahead and found him now, and hopefully they can keep him away from the people that are after him for the time being. I guess we'll have to see. So let's go ahead and hop into episode three: the monster and the superhero. Here we go. Hmm? No bad. Oh, oh, it's him. Huh? Everything that has happened in Hawkins can be traced back to Brenner's little pet. Wouldn't you agree? Remote assassinations. What you're suggesting is impossible. Is it? Eleven is dead. I'm not convinced. Why are you taking that box? Those are Peter's old school projects. You do not need those. Sam, do something. There's really nothing he can do. Argyle, shut up! Oh, a positive note, no one's gonna fuck with you in school anymore. I don't know, everybody else might fuck with her now for being the kid that broke the Mom? girl's face with the skate. Aren't you out of sight for sore eyes, huh? Kids like risotto? <laughs> <laughs> Alaska? Alaska? John, this means you're gonna have to, you know, take charge while I'm gone. Yeah. Wait. What? <laughs> John? He's going to Alaska. Baked, Alaska? bro. Baked. What's, what's what is wrong with you? I don't think I know what's wrong with him. Such a stressful day. Huh? This girl got smacked in the head today at the roller rink. Smacked. 
Yeah, it was one of those vicious skate attacks. Skate attacks? Yeah, but, but it wasn't like a nice skate. Was, um, she, she looked like she was going to be fine. She didn't look fine. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. No. Aren't you going to finish your... What? Is it the risotto? Everyone hates the risotto. Absolutely not. No, it's incredible. It's risotto. It's smacking. <laughs> Still have no idea who he is. <laughs> house also looks very similar to the Nightmare on Elm Street house. Yeah, it kind of does. Oh he's, get, oh, he's going in. What are you guys doing? We're gearing up. Preparing for the hunt. Hey, man. Relax. And we're not killers like Eddie. And we just want to talk to him. How it always starts. You didn't know Chris. By chat, they mean it. They're going to break his kneecaps and elbows. service they're definitely looking for you also they're uh, pretty convinced you killed Chrissy and the good news your name hasn't gone public yet but if we find out about you it's only a matter of time before others do too and once that gets out everyone and their shallow-minded mother is going to be gunning for you Amberlands. oh yeah did you look into Victor Creel Victor's locked away tight hon you don't need to worry about him all right last you saw Fred he was by the picnic tables do I have that right? Miss Wheeler. It was by the picnic table. Is that correct? Oh, shit. So, um, are we just not going to talk about it? There's nothing to say. You just don't really understand. Why didn't you tell me what's going on here? You've seen it. I've been bullied my entire life. I know what it's like. No. You don't. I do not belong. Everyone looks at me like... Like I'm a monster. You think I'm a monster, too. What? I I care for you so much. Care. Just say love, dude. That's what she's upset about. But you don't you don't love me anymore. You can't even write it, Mike. From 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 Mike. Okay, 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 I love you. You're being ridiculous. What like what is this? You you know what I think of you. You're the most incredible person in the world. Hi, is uh, Jane Hopper live here? Uh, yeah, um, what is this about? You may or may not be aware of an incident that happened last night involving Jane at the Rinko Mania. That was an accident. We have a warrant here that says otherwise. Wow, smoking on a plane. Damn. Yeah, it's definitely 80s. I'm not exactly an expert in parenting. <laughs> you don't say. But for what little it's worth, I think you did the right thing. Your children, bless their mischievous souls, <laughs> They like to get involved. This way, what? They play too much Nintendo, eat too much junk food, smoke some ganja, pound some beers, experiment sexually, I mean? Bad, bad. Hey, hey Murray, Murray. Buckle up. Like, this is really gonna save me if we crash. Well, planes should have fucking parachutes for everybody. You missed that plane tomorrow. I am still rich. And you are still stuck in Kamchatka. So whatever it is you're planning, American, Let's get to it, yes. Where do you want it? <laughs> Gotta keep so up appearances. Yeah. This thing. Why them? Maybe they were just in the wrong place. They were both at the game. And near the trailer park. We're at the trailer park. Uh, should we maybe not be here? Fred started acting weird the second we got here. <laughs> acting weird as in, like, scared. What if I saw some freaky wizard monster I would mention it to someone maybe they did I saw Chrissy leaving Miss Kelly's office guidance counselor yeah something you maybe want to share with the rest of us I don't want to waste your time it's a real shot in the dark yeah okay are you out of your mind flying solo with this Vecna creep on the loose us ladies we'll stick together always the goddamn babysitter <laughs> you're the mom Steve <laughs> you are you are the den mother why does he have to be den mother why can't he be scout master or scout master I mean I don't know uh, uh, that's not great that's another world bleeding through your ceiling right there yep yeah. 
Freddie Munson. He's in this band. Lucas? Oh, no. What are you doing with these douchebags? Oh, no. You know these freaks, Sinclair? They try to recruit me to their... club? Cult? Lucas, what the hell? Well, you have eyes, don't you? He's not here. Oh! Hey, man! Oh, fuck you, dude. I told you, someone's gonna get hurt. Where is he? I don't know! Where is he? I don't know! Oh! Hey! Oh! That's it, Anderson! It looks like she's still being processed. Okay, so, uh, I mean, what does that mean exactly? It means they're putting her in the system, after which point she'll be transferred to juvenile hall. What? Jail. There's no... No, Murray. <laughs> Hey, better than prison food. Yeah. Speaking of! Speak. Yeah. Dumb It's so pleasure. Damn. He's a... He's a healthy boy. He needs to eat. Yes, I'm an American. Yes. Oh, yeah. Don't miss. I'm so sorry to bother you for break, but do you have a minute to talk? We're gonna talk about it when you basically threw yourself at Nance. Okay, first of all, that's not what happened. Pretty sure <laughs> happened. It was pretty public. Are you implying that I still have a thing for Nance? No, I'm not implying. I'm You're stating, and as it relates to your steadfast refusal to date Robin, it's pretty much the only. There's a reason for that. That's yeah, not the only one. You're like bright red in the face right now. No, I'm not. I don't want to talk about it. I'll punch you so hard in your face that your teeth will fall back out. Oh. Whoa. Too far. <laughs> Can I use the bathroom? Sure. Up the stairs to the left. Max. Office key. Well, that's the way to go. Sketchy, yes. Is it necessary? No, I also, try. yes. Nothing. Steve, drive! Okay. Out and make it look like you're doing something illegal. Lucas peaced out. Dustin, are you, are you guys looking for Eddie? Yeah, we found him. No thanks to you. You found him? He's at a boathouse on Cold Mill Road. Dude, no! 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 He killed Chrissy, right? That's bullshit. Eddie tried to save Chrissy. Sinclair! I was, I was looking for clues. Clues? What, well, freshman think he's Sherlock Holmes or something? <laughs> I found one. No. What? Don't rat. I know where Eddie's hiding. Don't rat, dude! Fuck! He's trying to keep him away from his friends, though. Oh, shit. Uh-oh. That's even worse. They found her. Transporting a Jane Hopper? Yeah, what is this? I'll take her up your hands. Good try. Hey, A for effort there, kiddo. Welcome to Alaska! Oh, fuck that. <laughs> All right at home, man. Welcome to Alaska! <laughs> Nothing about this feels welcoming! Uh oh. What? They're checking everybody's chains. His is about to pop off. Oh man. God! <laughs> That's hella gnarly for a TV show. The Weekly Watcher, I can't believe they have this. Don't they write about, like, Bigfoot and UFOs? UFOs are absolutely real. Bigfoot I'm still on the fence about, but may I remind <laughs> you that we are looking for information on dark wizards? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so National Enquirer, Off basically. to a good start. Victor Creel claims vengeful demon killed family. The murder that shocked a small community. Oh. I'm not kidding. 
Get over here. Oh, he didn't kill anybody. What if a demon did invade Victor's home? It's just this demon wasn't any old demon. It was Vecna. Lucas may not be. Uh, it might have been a fake out. He may not be giving away where Eddie's at. He may be leading them over to them at the school, so he can meet up with them at the school. Oh shit! Fred was seeing the the counselor too. I'm really hoping he's just not leading them to the boathouse, and we're just being faked out that he is. Am I in trouble? For the roller skate thing? No, 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 no. We'll make that go away. Don't even. <laughs> don't even worry about. That. I guess it pays to know There's someone no in the federal government. Here. Hawkins is in danger. You have fought this evil before and you've won. Multiple times. Where you at, freak? Oh, we left Hop's cabin. Oh, okay. That's your chance. Hey, yeah, Lucas didn't off. rat him out. Okay, so Lucas yeah. didn't rat them out. I didn't think he was going to. I think... Uh, <sighs> Like the it was too on the nose with him just straight like Dustin just straight up telling him where he was at. Yeah. Like, you know, and it's like that was just there so they could pull this fake out pretty much. Run, Lucas, run, man. But they alone Turn your flashlight off. Win this war. Not without you. I know it's not fair to ask more of you. But I wouldn't be here if I didn't think this was the only way. I don't have my powers. What if I told you there was a way, a way to bring them back. Nice. What? If we're really gonna do this, I'm gonna ask that you leave with me now. I'm afraid your friends at Hawkins are very much... Can I see friends file? ...in the eye of the storm. Nice. I know. Oh, so no. She's gonna... Oh, God. Oh, she's in line for it, too. Shit, it's not. It's no, 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 not her. What if I'm the monster? I don't know you that well, kiddo, but I'm betting the fate of the planet that you're one of the good ones. You're gonna be gone. Oh, they didn't even get their food to go. They brought her home. Uh, I don't think they brought her home. I think they just sent them to they tell. Oh, they took them. Sent them to tell them what was going on. Well, I'll say this: at least she's the one making the decision, you know. Yeah. Oh no. Oh, Max. I was hoping like some resolution, but nope. oh my god! No, it's only episode three. Why nope. would they have a resolution? Well, no a resolution <laughs> to like like Vecna's like him basically like hacking into the human world to find another victim. I wonder if he switched targets and now he's on Max now and he's gonna relentlessly pursue Max. So I don't know if he's uh, coming after more than one person at a time or not. So that could be the fake out here. He might be after more than one person at a time, and he might end up getting the other dude before he gets her. Yeah. He might buy her some time. Either that or she might figure out a way to get away from him. I mean, from what it looked like when Chrissy was being taken, it was almost like she was in a trance, and no matter what, no matter what Eddie did, it didn't break it. Yeah. I hope that I hope that you know if that does happen, you know she like they're able to break her out of it, you know, pull her back to reality. I mean, I hope that, but I I don't know. I mean, all the things that I've that you know are going on right now, you know, Eleven going away with uh, with uh, the director, the uh, well, former director should emphasize that Joyce. Uh, going to Alaska, Hopper, crap, you know, breaking his friggin' ankle just to 
just to be able to get the get his uh, shackles off. And it doesn't then, make a lot of sense because you can't run with a, your ankle like that. Well, depends. I mean, because uh, there's a uh, again. So I think he was know, basically was, saying, oh, I don't know if he actually broke his foot. He definitely cut into it, though. Well, um, even if you like, people have survived on broken ankles and have ran and tra- and traversed great distances on like broken ankles, broken foot. Oh, uh, hell, man. That'd, that'd be crazy. Peep. <laughs> be some You'd be pain surprised what the human body is capable of whenever they're in survival mode. There was a man who climbed to the top, her, who got trapped on Mount Everest and climbed down with no equipment. In the process, he lost his left hand and his right foot. And he made it back. How did he? Why, why did he climb down with no equipment? He lost it. How did that happen? There was a snowstorm, and in the snowstorm and in the snowdrift, he lost his he lost his equipment. Ooh. He hunkered down in a tent, hoping that that would uh, that that he would be able to like sit, uh, you know survive through it. But then the storm blew the tent off of him and basically and blew his shit away from him. Got basically. rid of his equipment, and he lost his uh, left hand. Uh, on the he lost the ability to use his left hand. He broke his left hand on the way down, and then he broke his uh, he broke his right foot on the way down. Oh, I was assuming it was frostbite that he. But, no, frostbite's eventually what took it. Yeah. But he broke both of them, and because of poor circulation, frostbite set in, oh, yeah. and then he lost both by the time he got to base camp. When he got to base camp, they had already thought he was dead because he'd been gone for well over a week and a half. With no communication. They thought he was dead. He but, probably got there and he's like, y'all suck. <laughs> well, no, he got he's like, down why did nobody come to help me? He got down there and then eventually, like, they they took him in and they gave him, like, res- like you know, they got him warm. They gave they rehydrated him. They gave him food. And then they did, uh, re- you know, they basically did a diagnosis on how bad the frostbite was. And they told him that he, that he would lose his foot and his, uh, and his uh, hand. And he t- he said, "Cut him off." Yeah, at that point, I'd be like, "Whatever, man. At least I'm still alive." <laughs> That's again that. And you want to know the crazy thing? He climbed Mount Everest three years later after rehabilitating and getting a prosthetic replacement for his hand and a prosthetic foot. Did it again. Yep. <laughs> nice. He he re- he climbed Everest and he succeeded the second time he tried. Again. The whole thing is just like what the human what the human body is capable of when it is pushed to the breaking point. You find out just how impossible, like how impossible certain thing, like the the impossible things that human beings are capable of. There was a man who got lost in the Sahara Desert, and he was he basically gave up and tried to slit his wrists, but he was so dehydrated that the blood would not flow from his wrists and it clotted too quickly and it, and basically he survived. And then he kept walking and eventually he found a settlement and then they got him help. He was lost in the desert for, I think, uh, like a solid week. No water or anything. And the fact he survived is a miracle. I mean, again... <laughs> There are people who have existed that have gone through amazing things, and to think that they survived, it's it. You would think that I'm lying to you, but it's real. Yeah. There was a man who was from my hometown. He was struck by lightning seven times. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah, seven times, oh, and he lived. And he lived to... Was it during the same storm seven, or seven different times? Seven different times during his life. At a point, you would think he'd stop fucking going outside during thunderstorms. Well, the thing He's is... He's probably like, I've been hit by lightning six times. No fucking way it'll happen he was, again. He was a park ranger, dude. That was the crazy thing. He was a park ranger, and he kept getting struck by lightning. And he lived to be up in years, and then later in life, he sort of lost his mind, and uh, he, he offed himself. He's probably on time number one. He's like, got hit by lightning. Oh, got to go out in a thunderstorm. Lightning never strikes the same place twice, right? And he's like, so that was a lie. Yeah. 
And then he's like, oh, well, the chances of me getting hit by lightning a third time are just exponentially small. God damn it! Like, you know? Oh, I was wrong. Yeah, seven times. times. He'd been hit by lightning on seven occasions. The human lightning conductor, Roy Sullivan. Yep. He is from Greene County, Virginia. Right? Right. And he was a Shenandoah National Park ranger. And he uh, died in 1983 at 71. Did he die from getting struck by lightning again? <laughs> no, he, like I said, he offed himself. Oh, man. What the fuck? Well, eventually... How are you going to survive getting hit by lightning seven times and then take yourself out? What the fuck? Well, again, his whole thing was... Uh, I think it was... Let's see. Where was the... Yeah, here it is. So, first one in 1942, then 69, 70, 72, 73, 76, 77. <laughs> Struck while fishing in a freshwater pool. Why were you fishing during a thunderstorm? Well, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> oh God. His wife was also struck once. <laughs> And it all happened in Virginia. That's the shittiest thing. It happened. It happened in Virginia every time. <laughs> oh my god. Uh. Yeah, Roy Sul- Roy Sullivan. He is a hell of a man who actually existed, and you wouldn't believe it. If it weren't for if it weren't for the fact that he actually did, did exist, yep. Apparently, he's in the Guinness Book of World Records for getting struck by lightning that many yeah. times. <laughs> uh, like, I dude, I would start wearing nothing but rubber. Like, <laughs> like after like three times, I'd be like, I gotta build myself a fucking he'd be rubber the suit, man. a rubber suit with a rubber hat, and like I'm gonna wear that bitch at you'd all be, times. You'd be the Michelin Man. <laughs> So oh it's like after God. three times, you got to start thinking about ways to keep it from happening again. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like if oh I got God. fucking bit by a shark twice, I'd be like, yeah, you're never going to fucking convince me to go any fuckware near the ocean again. Fuck all of it's you. Like, it's like, fuck the water, dude. I ain't Your chances of getting... I don't give a fuck. Fuck you. I ain't going back in the ocean anymore. It's like, shut <laughs> up. I'm not going back. Leave me alone. Fool me once. Shame on you. Fool me twice. Or... Yeah, fool me twice, shame on me, right? Yeah. Fool me three times, go fuck yourself. Fool me three times, I'm a fucking idiot. Like, <laughs> oh, there's God. clearly something clinically wrong with me if you fooled me three times. Like, clearly, absolutely. Uh, all right. Well, that's gonna do it, everyone. This was Stranger Things season four, episode three: the monster and the superhero. So, hopefully Eleven gets her powers back and she's able to assist in some way in fighting Vecna. I guess we'll just have to see. Hopefully Max is okay. Oh yeah, that too. Hopefully Max just... I hope Max basically... Also, I'm glad, uh, by the way, uh, my friend that had posted their thoughts about Stranger Things and how it had a problem with it before we had started watching this um, with season four. Like, I don't agree with what he was talking about. He said there was every time he said without telling which character there was a character that every time it goes back to that character it seems like it slows everything to a crawl, and I'm like I'm I'm only assuming they could have been referring to like Hop's part of the story, and I don't I just don't agree like on any account I think that everyone's story is interesting and nothing's slowing it down like I really enjoyed these first three episodes so far. I definitely don't have anything to nitpick with it like I did with Obi Wan you know. Yeah, Obi Wan like in terms of uh, con- like just full like continuity and everything. It there's problems in this. The only thing I really have problems with are you know just things that currently I don't understand, but hopefully will pan out later on. Uh, in terms of like the character relationships, but again, that's how it is. You know. I may be upset with it now, but later on I may be like, holy shit, I see what they were going for. It's just like Steve. I thought Steve, you know, his existence in the in the, uh, in the the Stranger Things universe was just like, oh, so he's a bully. Okay. Yeah. Stereotypical bully. Yeah. This character's just going to be absolutely just like 
cannon fodder. I hope he the dies. The thing is, when you go back and watch Steve again, he's really not that much of a bully. Like, well, he, he retaliated for something someone else did to him. Like, because I went back and seen season one again, you know, and I was like, you know, I remember thinking he was, like, such a bad dude, but he's not that bad. Well, yeah. Even in the first season. They definitely set it up in a way to fake you out into not liking him until he starts to have some character development. Yeah, I, yeah, but I, either way, though, my thoughts on that at the time were just like, uh, this dude, like, I'm not gonna like this guy. And then by the end of the first season, I'm just like, holy shit, I see what they were doing. Because I also well remember, like, not really liking Jonathan either, because I'm like, he's a fucking creep. Like, he's fucking Kind of, yeah. His voyeurism was a definitely, like, a what the fuck kind mm-hmm. of thing for me. But, yeah. I get what you're saying. Anyway. But, that's, uh, that's gonna do it, everybody. So, uh, anyway. I guess until next time, signing off, I'm Nate. I am Nick. Take care, everybody. We'll see you in the next one. Peace. Yeah.